Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler. With just a few days before the Tata Steel Chess Tournament commences, I would like to squeeze a game in from the recent 2016 Blitz Championship in Qatar. I was looking through the games Nakamura played and finally chose this game against Ivanchuk, one that was played on 30 December 2016 and in round 18. Prior to this round, Nakamura had won 9 of his games and drew 5. The 3 games he lost, he did so to Salem in round 2, Bosiosic in round 8 and to Vahir Lagraf in round 17. Ivanchuk, as you know, won the Rapid and in the Blitz he hoped for a very similar outcome. Prior to his game against Nakamura, he won 9 times, drew 4 of them and lost 4. This game was a decisive one and there was too much at stake. Since I'm on the statistics side of things very fast, I want to share a bit of information with you. If Nakamura had the white pieces, he would almost have played C4, the English opening, because of all of his games with white. He played them using C4, with the exception of two games. Against his largest and most fearful rival, Carlsen, he used d4 as he did against Nugent. Another player who used the English in nearly all of his 10 games was this guy, Aronian, who started up with c4 in 7 of his games and in the remaining 3 he played c4 as his second move, still bringing into play the English opening in combination with another variation like the Anglo-Indian type variation as we shall see in our game. In this game against Ivanchuk, Nakamura was playing with black pieces and responded against knight f3 with knight f6 and here we have yet another c4 follow up but this time from the other side of the board and from a rival player. The game continued with e6, knight c3, d5, d4 and immediately transposed into the Queen's Gambit decline, which is one of the very normal positions you will get with the English. Bishop e7 was met by a very aggressive Bishop g5, and here Naka challenged the Bishop, who immediately withdrew to h4. Naka castled, and e3 was something we have seen in many of the games we looked at previously, right after the bishop is able to roam on the other side of the board. Nakamura went for a different move than the one he usually plays and forced an exchange of materials with knight e4. Should white take on e4 first, the exchanges through d takes and bishop takes and queen takes will leave the black with a tiny little advantage, though nothing significant to worry for white but one thing for sure, though there is a double pawn on the e-file, that knight is now forced to move to a much safer location and this just might be a problem because with knight d2, black can develop his pawn and ensure his e-pawn on e4 remains safe. Instead of this variation, Imanchuk took first on e7, forcing the exchange and here the knight did not take but White moved his rook into position. Nakamura strengthened his center through c6 and by adding pressure on the knight, Nakamura is probably the only player who can afford to ignore this threat and plays out knight d7. And here we have the first trick in the game. You would argue that white can be a pawn up and a pawn is a pawn, but is this really the case? Let's see what happens should the queen grab that pawn. You don't think Nakamura will give up a pawn for nothing, and he doesn't. By getting the queen into b4 with a check, Ivanchuk will be happy to have his knight on f3 because knight d2 is one of two moves to block the check and still allow the king to castle if needed. But this move does not only allow the queen to take on b2, but here the white queen needs to return to c2 and with the exchange on c2 black is as equal as white and the game can carry on without the queens. 
This is the reason why the knight on e4 was not taken, and rather bishop e2 was preferred. Without any hesitation, the horses were taken off, and with the subsequent taking on c4, and with the recapture of this pawn by the queen, black moved in strongly with e5 in an attempt to break open the centre. Since Ivanchuk rejected the gesture with a castle, Nakamura took on d4, and with knight takes and knight to f6, the bishop found the better square and took control of the white diagonal and stopping a possible knight e4. With the bishop now occupying the f3 square, knight e4 simply does not work, and in fact, this will be a blunder because if the knight takes on c6 after b takes, the queen can capture the knight. Should the queens be exchanged, the pawn on c6 still hangs and cannot be saved. And once this pawn has been eliminated, white, with two pawns up, is looking for a certain win. Nakamura did not even move his knight in light of this, but brought into play his rook. And Ivanchuk having done something similar by getting his own rook onto d1, Nakamura shoots with a5, followed up by a3. Knight e4 now works perfectly, but Nakamura chose another variation, and with bishop d7, he had put into play another plan. Stopping black's plan, Ivanchuk traded off the queens, and in turn, black traded off the bishops. Knight f5 was not particularly challenging, because with the return of the knight to f6, and the subsequent repositioning of the knight to d6, Nakamura instantly pins him, and this very move forced Ivanchuk to play out the only move, and this was sending the rook back to base on the first rank. Rook d7 does not only cover b7, but also prepares rook d8, which poses a number of difficulties for white if this is allowed. Ivanchuk saw the problem and pushed his knight back to force the exchange on d1, but Nakamura rejected it and moved out his rook to e7. The position looks very equal, but white has one little problem, and if not careful, that small problem can become a very large one. Having his king locked in without an escape route is not something many players would accept, and it was at this very move where Ivanchuk looked and played f3 and released the pressure of being mated unnecessarily. Nakamura played it risky here and hoped to get something out of it. He attacked the knight with b5, but this left open c6 and the knight took the opportunity to occupy this square and threatened the rook. Black got his rook to a6 and though he left open c6, which was an easy grab for white, white also left e3, and Nakamura took it when c6 was taken. The game got on fire when Ivanchuk released his knight to d5, and here there are no choices but to follow a predetermined sequence of moves. Rook takes was necessary, followed by knight takes, and here, once again, Nakamura blocked the knight's axis to f5 through g6. Rook check, let the king to g7, and with this sequence of moves, the a-pawn dropped, which in turn led to the exchange on a5. And with a-pawn up, Nakamura was in the driving seat. With rook b7, h5 h4 and knight e8, Ivanchuk attacked the h-pawn and after the exchange Ivanchuk too had his plan to centralize his knight on e5 but had to wait for Nakamura's next move. The rook came in to a2 with a check which led the king to f1. Knight d6 with the hope that rook d7 would be played was just what Nakamura expected and knew very well that Ivanchuk was planning to hit on f7 anytime soon, but Nakamura had it all worked out. After knight f5, knight e5 was on the cards, but Nakamura prevented the capture through f6. A direct f4 secured the knight's safety, 
and looked like that pawn was eventually going to fall. But once again, Nakamura found the only move to save the pawn and played knight h6. Since the f7 pawn was safe at the cost of locking in the knight, Ivanchuk tried his rook on the b pawn, but Nakamura with rook to b2 allowed knight d3. Though rook d2 looked much stronger and better, he secured the taking on h4 and did not mind dropping the b pawn. Nakamura could have taken on h4, but he did not rush this move but got his knight out to f5. With the rook going back to b7 to hit on black's weakest pawn, with the likely knight e5 move, was maybe premature because when black took on h4, white changed its priority and unlocked his king from the first rank. With these moves that followed, which involved a number of repetitive moves, it seemed the game was heading towards a draw, albeit white was trailing by a pawn. But slowly, slowly, Nakamura got a grip. And here with rook a3 check was looking for a fast mate. And this would have been possible if and only if Ivanchuk played king g4, which is very easily playable with seconds on his clock, rook g3 seals the victory. This is the reason why Ivanchuk avoided coming up the board with his king and returned to the second rank. Attacking the pawn on f4 led again to the king coming back to f3, but since the rook a3 trick did not work, Nakamura tried a better move and came in with a check on d4, because against any move, that pawn on f4 was about to fall when the knight found e6. With less and less pieces on the board, and even by dropping the pawn on f4, this did not imply black was winning, but still had a long way ahead before he would be able to capitalise on his surplus. But here Ivanchuk blunders big time in a game where he held very well and having avoided the tricks Nakamura came up with, he played the only move that loses. f5 was the move Nakamura waited for because after the capture, Ivanchuk became desperate and tried his last resource to capture that vital pawn on f7 and being so fixated on that move, drove him to his own destruction. He very carelessly played rook b7, and though one blunder was large enough, the second consecutive blunder was unforgivable, and it was here when Nakamura killed him off with the deadly rook e4 check, picking up the knight and ending the game on that very move. Coming back to this move, I guess if the black king was not on the same file as the knight, Ivanchuk would have expected a move like knight g5, but this again would never have worked, as the rook prevents the king from coming up the board, and therefore white is unable to carry out his plan to take on f7. With two pawns down, it would be near impossible for white to win, but sometimes, even when it seems impossible to win, and this was the case with Adley versus Flores, in the Blitz round 16 game, the game ended in a mate even when the end game involved a knight versus a rook. This game between Ivanchuk and Nakamura is one of thousands where one little move out of place like f5 had been just enough to determine the outcome of a game and this is where Nakamura comes in to demonstrate how fast and how comfortable he is in achieving the most impossible result. Before I press the stop button, Nakamura went on and tied for third with 14.5 points, but due to the scoring system in place, which many found unfair, he just ended up fourth and missed his place on the podium. On this note, and as usual, I would like to thank you for taking part, and once again a big thank you for watching.